Under government policy, the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, or AIST, launched a new research organization in April 2014. Its goal is to make Fukushima the prefecture that pioneers the intensive introduction of renewable energy. That new organization is the Fukushima Renewable Energy Institute, or FREA. Let's start by looking at the Institute's facilities. This is the main building. Many ingenious design features give the building outstanding environmental performance. This is where ordinary experiments and administrative work take place. To the west of the main building is the experiment building. Large floors offer an open floor plan that allows for flexible arrangement of the latest equipment. There is even a room for a line dedicated to manufacturing silicon solar cell modules. To the north of the main building is the demonstration field. Photovoltaic power systems have a rated output of 500 kilowatts. Here, a number of different manufacturers' panels are laid out. Wind power generation systems have a rated output of 300 kilowatts. This is where research into and development of the newest wind turbine technology takes place. To the west of the demonstration field are the energy control building and experimental facilities. Here, research is conducted into storing and managing power generated by photovoltaic and wind power systems. These are the next generation silicon solar cell development facilities. The entire process of developing crystalline silicon solar cells can be handled here. From the slicing of silicon ingots to the production of modules. This is the first public research institution in Japan to have a line of this class. The photovoltaic power team makes full use of this equipment to develop thin, crystalline silicon solar cells of under 0.1 millimeters in thickness and the solar modules that use them. Thinner wafers make it possible to hold down the cost of manufacturing. Under Japan lie what are estimated to be the world's third largest reserves of geothermal resources. If technology can be developed to inject liquids into highly heated rock, extracting steam, and if geothermal power plants were to be established throughout Japan, the nation would have a huge amount of power from geothermal energy. However, because of numerous problems, various uncertainties, cost, the need to coexist with hot spring owners during conventional development, geothermal energy has yet to see widespread use. By analyzing data from a wide range of instrumentation, the research team is working to develop technologies that will enable us to identify geothermal resources and their quantities. The GSHP system works like this. The subsurface temperature remains almost constant throughout the year. Thus the subsurface temperature is lower than the atmospheric temperature in summer and higher in winter. By exchanging heat between the subsurface layer and the ground surface, the heat pump can help air conditioners run more efficiently. Snow melting systems can also be operated more efficiently in the winter to melt the snow that accumulates on roads. The shallow geothermal and hydrogeology team studies groundwater flow and geological conditions in an attempt to scientifically demonstrate the suitability of ground source heat pump installation in a particular region. 
Currently, work is underway to prepare a map of potential installation locations for the GSHP system in the Tohoku region, primarily in Fukushima Prefecture. The wind power team mounts devices called LIDAR on wind turbines in an effort to develop technology for accurately reading the wind. LIDAR emits infrared laser light from the forward portion of the wind turbine. This is then used to measure the round trip time of the laser, which is bounced off of aerosol particles in the air and changes in wavelength. The round trip time tells us the distance of the aerosols, while changes in wavelength tell us wind speed, taking into account the Doppler effect. From these results, one can control the angle of the wind turbine blades and nacelle. This technology is expected to improve wind turbine power generating capacity by 5% and extend system lifetime by 10%. This is a unified demonstration system of hydrogen energy carrier production and utilization. The amount of power used per day by about 1,000 typical households can be stored in the form of a hydrogen energy carrier. This is the world's first such system. With this system, renewable energy is used to obtain hydrogen through the electrolysis of water. The hydrogen is combined with toluene to form methylcyclohexane, or MCH, which is then stored and transported. Substances such as MCH are referred to as hydrogen energy carriers. When power is needed, the hydrogen is removed from the MCH and mixed with diesel oil for power generation using a cogeneration engine. The key to this system will be the R&D of the hydrogen carrier a catalyst for adding and removing the hydrogen and the cogeneration engine. The hydrogen energy carrier team is conducting research into all of this. The energy network team conducts research into solar cells, power conversion equipment and power storage systems. It is also necessary to understand how energy is consumed in each region, managing power according to the power sources and heat sources available to its users. Based on demonstration data, the research team is working to establish the best mix for providing energy. For example, this is Freya's energy network. Power generation is available to the Institute via solar cells and wind turbines, with any surplus electricity generated sold to the power company or stored in batteries or as hydrogen. Conversely, if we are short on power, we use our stored energy or purchase it from the power company. This requires flexible power management that takes into account a span of about a week at a time. In April 2016, a new facility called the Smart System Research Facility started operations. This equipment is used for the research and development of inverters. Now, let's take a look at the main power resource equipment. This is a PV array simulator. It simulates a photovoltaic power system producing a maximum of 3 megawatts and 2,000 volts and emulates intermittent photovoltaic power output that represents the fluctuation of various conditions. A grid simulator can be set to the desired voltage and frequency to reproduce a variety of grid conditions around the world. A distributed energy resource up to 5 megawatts can also be connected.
The Environmental Test Lab reproduces environments with a temperature range between minus 40 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius and a humidity range of 30 to 90 percent. This enables environmental testing on power equipment like inverters used in various locations, such as deserts and polar zones. This is the electromagnetic wave anechoic chamber. With an area equivalent to five tennis courts, this is the largest anechoic chamber with a large power supply in Japan. The facility introduced here can be used for product development and R&D as a user facility. The Smart System Research Facility contributes to the creation of a society that utilizes electricity in a smart way. Reconstruction of Disaster Affected Regions Matching renewable energy use with local climates and communities. Developing the next generation of young scientists. And maintaining both a community-based and international point of view. Together with its partners in the community, Freya will invigorate society and increase the use of renewable energy.